The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Bowser Chapman here. Dow's up 97, SP's up 28, and we're going to go through a bunch of things right here. I need to just clarify something uh, that, that occurred just every year I've done. Let's see, since uh, 2003, when I saw him on you, I came on to TFN in 2002. 2000, I think it was February when I started my very first newsletter. And I've done one almost every single day. A couple of times I've been away for maybe, uh, I don't think I've skipped more than three days, even when I'm away overseas or whatever it is. Um, so if you multiply that by what, how many how many trading days are there during the year? Maybe 180. Um, multiply that by over 20 years. I think you get the point that there are a lot of newsletters that I've done. Um, every once in a while, I typed something, uh, and I've got a very uh, comprehensive newsletter that goes out every day. Um, and every every once in a while, I make a, an error, and I I have like a, we have a, a, a position, and I have I always like to take a little bit off as things are moving up or moving down, whatever it is. Uh, but if I get a position that I think has the potential to go. Uh, to have a have some legs, just that we don't know, but you, you never can tell. Then what I do is we get the position, I have the stop in, and then I raise the stop. But what I do is if there's a really good gain, um, I especially if I've got a position that looks like there's a chance that this could have some legs, I I put in a stop that then gets raised. But to get keep that core position. If there's a pullback, I'll split it. I'll take a tad off and then I'll split it so that I still got the core position and then make the stop with like pennies off the, if it's a long position, pennies off the, off the entry price because you never know the wiggle from a, from a low that's being made. And yesterday what I did is we got in perfectly for the UDOW three times long. And then um, I thought I had... I'd raise, I gave it a dollar twenty stop. That was perfect. That was great, and it had a good rally. And then I said, if there's a pullback, um, let's raise the stop, take a tad off at a certain point, but then raise the stop. And I made the stop. I didn't realize it. Way higher uh, than, way higher than the entry point. Three points higher. But I, I didn't know that. What I really wanted to do was just to raise the stop from a dollar twenty to much less. And then take off a little bit if there was a pullback before it hit our, our little tad that we would take off. And I, no one actually said, gave me a, even a mention to say, what was that number? Because that's not how you usually do it. Um, so I, no one actually sent in anything. And I one, one person did say, hey, the stop was hit. But actually the number wasn't hit because it was the wrong number. Um, it was an impossible number. It never got there. So I always have difficulty with that because there are some people that are in and some people that did use a, a stop that they thought I did. Now, I don't like that. That puts me in a difficult position because we got pretty much the low yesterday and it's still acting very nicely. It's not so far off that I can't say, okay, well, let's get a new position. That's not the issue. The issue is I, I, it's a quandary because so people are actually in, they've already taken a tad off for a 2% gain uh, if they held the position. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly what to do. I'll try to figure that one out. But I hate every once in a while. I do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, positions over the years. I, I just every once in a while, I just make a dumb mistake. Just like in tennis yesterday, those dumb mistakes, you just look and you say, what was, where, how, what? Yeah. Anyway, I don't like that. It's just it's upsetting for everybody. There's there's no win-win here because I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but I'll handle it. I'll manage. It's happened before, not often, but I'll do it. 
of meantime back at ranch Dow's up 33767 so this is took a look at why I went I wanted to go long there's a, another Chapman wave Roman candle is never spoken about because it's something I made up. It's a, a particular candle that we've seen so many times. Look at this. He has an inverted red Chapman Wave Roman candle. Uh, back in, I, I used to use these, and then they became extremely forceful, like in 2000. And I wonder if I can go there right now. Should I do it? Uh, I don't want to waste time. There was a candle just after the high was made in 2008 in the monthly chart. And I said, this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle. If we take out halfway of the wick, at any point in the next two months, be careful because we could take out the low. Well, we did that, and then the very next month, we made another Roman candle, took it out, and that was it. We had a pretty serious decline from that level, 2008. Okay, now, what I wanted to just show you, uh, 2007, sorry, 2007. So, in this particular instance, we need to close above this candle's high, the candle of the 27th of um, September, 33,000. 731. We're right now at 33,748. We didn't close above it. We went above it. But I have a rule of thumb in this particular Chapman Wave Roman candle technique. If at any point we were six, for 60 minutes or more under 33,460 yesterday, that would have said, be careful, we could retest the low. Because we went above it, it means that uh, the close, this price right here opens at 33,642, no, 33,000, oops, it closed at 33,550, yeah. So this close now should become some kind of a support level. That's the way this works, and it works for two out of three sessions. Now, as I'm looking at this, there's a lot going on. Um, I'm going to talk purely technical at the moment. You see the weekly chart? How close, let me show you in the real, in the, just the three, three chart pattern. So what we're looking at here is, oh, look, I've got the dollar up. Let me show you. The dollar is way above the nine period moving average on the weekly chart. Weekly chart is above the 14 period moving average. So that's a good sign. So I don't think the dollar's done just yet. I know a lot of people are saying that's it. I don't think so. Now let me go to the Dow. This is the weekly chart, and I'll show you why. I didn't get too fussy about the... Um, <clears throat> This is the weekly chart. Let me go. This is the weekly chart. Let me just put that down there. You see the weekly chart has gone S. That means the nine-period moving average has gone below the 14-period moving average. And that's the reason why I didn't want to get aggressively long because the weekly charts, you remember the Dow was the first one to turn negative and then the others followed uh, and then it went positive and the others followed. So I'm using this as kind of a benchmark because if I go to the S&P, there isn't any room for error today. That's why I'm not overly uh, fuzzy about the position that we had yesterday, because I think we'll have another opportunity over the next week. There's a lot going on. There is the, um, do we fund the government? Well, you know that the parties always wait. I don't know why they do. Is there no way of, of, of avoiding this every single time? To use it as some kind of a, a, a crux, to use it as some kind of leverage on both parties' side. It's just horrible the way that happens. But look, that nine period moving average in the weekly chart of the SP is so close to turning negative. Look at the QQQ. It's not, it's still quite nicely above. I'll be back. The Dow's up 54 now. SP's uh, up 20, holding a little bit better than. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. Basil Chapman does up uh, 52, as if he's up 23. And look at this V-shaped pattern right under the 200 period moving average in the one minute chart with a double top right there. Remember, I like to measure double tops and you can see it was starting to weaken over here. And we've pulled back. I, I mean, the irony of the whole thing is that it did have a short on at 67, uh, 43.67. And then I thought, uh, I, you know, I just, uh, there's too much going on. Let me just get out of that. And now we're out of it and it's down at 59. Anyway, that's the way it goes. Can't do too many things at once. Now, let's just do a couple of things. So, within the context of just the patterns we're looking at, we've made a peak F in the five minute top. We made a peak F in the Chapman wave. Now, this is the exact thing I was talking about uh, in October of uh, 2007. The S&P uh, looked like it had made a stop in July. Everyone thought, this is it, this is it. And then it had this fabulous rally. And then it only made one or two peaks. And it looked like that was a brand new leg B. But I was discussing this and saying, no, no, no. It looks to me like this is a failure pattern. This is this. The double hump, I have these nicknames for these different techniques, where the MACD um, looks as if it's going to turn down, but then it has another rally, and that second arch is the one that you've got to be careful of because if the stochastic goes above 80%, then immediately goes under it, <clears throat> this is the one that can fail, and that's where we are right now. So I'd say 4350 is going to be absolutely imperative to hold in the next hour and a half for support. Just in the very short term. Now, that's not to say that I'm not looking at some stocks that are starting to show some nice signs of, of pos positivity. So let's get back to our story. <clears throat> Within this context, you can see the Dow chart on the daily. The nine period moving average is way under the 14. The price couldn't hold above the 200. It hit almost hit the 200 period, the, the orangey pink uh, 200 period moving average. And now it's pulling back. The MACD is still very weak. Stochastic is at 15%. So the stochastic went from single digits to 15%. That's kind of good. The MACD hasn't given any signal yet on the upside. The price has rallied, but I need to wait for the close because today is uh, you have to, it's a daily chart. So you have to wait for the full day candle to come close anyway, by the end of the day. We could have another burst of energy and push above the 200 period moving average. So what I'm saying is I'm watching this very closely. 
And the fact that the nine period moving average has at this particular point, but Friday has to close by the end of the day, we can see that uh, disappear, that S, because it's a weekly chart based on a weekly bar. We'll see what happens. But when you're looking at the monthly chart, it's just a little bit too much of a pullback to say, wow, um, we should immediately take out the high that was made in the Dow of uh, 35,679 uh, 35, uh, in October, early part of October. It looks to me like it's a work in progress. But if, because the high that was made, uh, 645, uh, 679, 679, yep. This high means that if we go higher, one penny above 35,679, the high of August the 1st, that's where we went short, we still remain short uh, for, for uh, intermediate term position. And a longer term position, we're still long from October low. Um, if, in fact, we go to 35,679.34, one penny above that, that if it's in October, it just extends leg B. That would be really positive. And say we should by January or so be moving into the 37,000s. So there's a lot to, to ask for the, in this market. But my suspicion is we aren't yet done. Based on my work, we aren't yet done with the consolidation. <clears throat> And now we're giving back a little bit of the S&P. We're going to be watching this week. What if, and this is just a what if situation, by the end of the day, <clears throat> the Dow is down 135 points and the S&P is down 45 points. Will that change this weekly? <clears throat> 9.14 from green to pink? No, it'll take a lot more. It'll probably have to go down below the 4238 low of a few days ago. I just don't see how that's going to happen today. But I'm watching it because if it does, it says, wow, not only have, do you have the pattern, the dreaded H in the weekly chart, not only are you looking at a much weaker right shoulder than the head of the top here, that was the, the, the high of, <clears throat> I think it was July 20, uh, or the week of the, August the 4th. I think July 31st or so was the high in the S&P. So you've made your dreaded H and you're almost at a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside of the arch formation. And look, when you made the retest of that high on the week of the uh, 1st of September at 45.41, look at the, st the MACD was already lower, had deflected lower. The stochastic was much lower. on balance volume was lower. So we're not quite done in this whole consolidation as I see it. So it's the reason why we haven't gone heavily onto the long side. So let me, as I get this, I've got questions and I want to deal with those because I did some of the charts of stocks that I said that I wanted, I had questions about and I wanted to get to. So Eli Lilly's question again this week about where would I start a new entry? That's for some people. Others already along from some time ago. So it's completely two different scenarios. One is I said any new buyer has to have maybe three positions, but I would probably hold off. And I said, if you're asking me for my opinion, I would hold off. I would not do anything. I would wait for a new position. If you're in a long position, what I'd said, take something off. When it was up in the 590s, I said, you've got to take something off here because this is like a gift, this kind of vertical move to the upside, not quite an exponential move to the but a very sharp vertical move to the upside. Mm -hmm. I'm still saying hold off. I said, give me a yell when we're between uh, five, I think I said 546 and 532. We're at 538 right now. And the reason is there was this low that was made right here, uh, August the uh, 18th <clears throat> at 533.90. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, today we are at 538. So we're getting close. So give me a yell. We'll look at it together. I think it could be getting to at least a basing attempt. The weekly chart is fantastic. The monthly chart is even more than fantastic. But it's the daily chart that we're looking at. So, okay, that's Eli Lilly. Next question came in. Could I look at XLE? XLE, fabulous move. 
Look at this beautiful weekly cup formation. You remember, I'm all about these patterns. Uh, I'm all about the plumb line. The plumb line was on the right. It wasn't the exact midpoint. And it came right back to 94.71 was the high back in 2022. What did it get you? It got you 93.69 uh, mid-September. Now it's digesting those gains. And you see the cup formation in the weekly chart. And that's just saying to me, you cannot rule out the Select Energy Spider Fund because it keeps buying buyers. I do believe that we're in a topping area, but topping doesn't mean to say you're going to crash to the downside. It's like I have the consolidation between about, I'd say about 86 to 85 and 95. It's in this range, and it can stay there for a while, based on up back down, down 30, uh, up in the area, 35. It's Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, so uh, let's get back to some of the stories that we're looking at. So, yeah, so this did drop down to the 4352 level. I'm just watching it because there's so much uncertainty still. Now, we could turn out that Monday, by Monday we've got um, the, the there is funding. Uh, the one, at least one or two of the three unions says that, or that's the order unions, uh, says, whoo hoo um, we're going to get uh, pretty much what we want. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting close. We're very, very close. And out of the room, Monday, we have a 500-point update. 
But when you look at what's going on, I don't think things are going to be quite so easy because the unions are in the drive. <clears throat> excuse me, the auto unions are in the driver's seat. Uh, they can they can pretty much ask for whatever they want, and they might get a lot more than they they wanted, uh, thought that they would get, because uh, the auto companies. I mean, let's just look at them right here. Look, here's General Motors. General Motors at the bottom of its range. It was once up in the high 60s. It's trading now almost half at 33. It was at 32 just the other day. It's really struggling. I guess repels of the 200 period exponential moving average weekly chart. Uh, let's see, you've got Ford. Ford is acting a little bit better. It's above its 200 period moving average, but still stuck in a range. It hit almost 25. I think it hit 25. Let me see, January of, let me just check this out right here. I think it was just above 25. Yeah, 25.22, January of, of last year. So 25.22. <laughs> 0.221-2022. And uh, it plummets down to the 10 area, gets more than cut in half, and it's struggling. Uh, I, let me just have a look at Toyota. Toyota, I haven't updated for a while. That's had a really nice move. Don't, don't worry about gaps. Anything that trades overseas is always going to have gaps. So I can't take I'll take it from the last one. So this is peak. In the way, if you identify the lowest obvious low bar, you merely count each successively higher peak. If it gets to a B, there's a chance you can get upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, meaning it should go to at least four higher peaks, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and then other things can happen. Let's see what happens. There's your D. And what does it do? D becomes your top. And now it's, I, it's technically I'd like the nine period to go close under the 14 to go pink for it to have a down arrow, but it's closed under the 14 period moving average so far, even if it includes today, four times um, out of the last four sessions, I'm going to put a down arrow to say it's got at least a sell signal, maybe not yet a sell mode. And the weekly chart has a peak A, B, C, D, E, F. So, yeah, it's done much, much better. Toyota Motors doing much, much better than the others. But anything can happen. All right, now the next thing I need to do is I need to, questions came in, so I'm going to go follow them up. And I'm about to talk about, I think this is going to probably coincide with another question I can't get you right now, but I'm almost certain that this is going to coincide with a couple of people asking me, what about the semiconductors, which we are still short from two, to less than two points off the all-time high. Um, it should have a nice bounce from here. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> Up to at 146.33, this is a new gray leg A. Why is it gray? Because the MACD is still very weak. Stochastic still only 20%, 22%. On balance, funnily enough, is getting a little bit overbought on this balance. Isn't that interesting, huh? But here's the top, 161.17 on the 31st of July. Uh, I think it was within a day of the top of the S&P. Let me, let me squeeze that a little bit so you can see what we've got. 161.17, there's the all-time high, and there was a G slash B in the monthly chart. 159.42 was the high in November of 2021, plunges to 83, cut in half, and then boom, it goes all the way back and makes a nominal new high. That, to me, is a big positive looking out. Shorter term, this pullback has gone underneath the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. It's now a repellent zone, but it's testing it. And that nine period moving average has still not turned negative. And I wouldn't be surprised. This is going to be, this is speculation now. This is not based on anything that we have positions in other than that we are short. We, we had the SOXS, which is three times short, number of positions, really nice gains. I failed to get back in on this sharp move down. And even this bounce, I'm waiting to see what happens to see. Is there a whole new set of new legs to the downside? Well, we've done the one to one. This is the, TFNN lightning bolt pattern, A to B equals C to D. That's got it's got nothing to do with peak A, peak B, or trough A, trough B in the Chapman wave. This is just a measurement pattern. That's all. But it has the exact. This I didn't draw. I had this in, and then I, I decided it was getting too crowded. There's a Chapman wave falling axe formation right there. It's the inverted one. And what is that? That's this one right here. It's not this. Whoops, it's not this. 
That's the falling axis when it goes to a high and then it comes down and makes lower highs and much lower lows and then it forms a base and then all of a sudden it takes out the declining upper trend line and it can go one to one in a measured move. I call it the Chapman Wave Parallel Extension Cup Pattern, right? All of these have long titles, but they are descriptive of what we're looking at. So then it can also occur when it's inverted. In other words, this pattern right here, if I can find it, do I still have it? It should be here. Hello? There it is. Nope, there it isn't. There it is. This is the exact same thing. I even have the lettering turned upside down. You see it expands to the upside, and then when it fails, it can go one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. It has to be in a parallel movement. In other words, the angle of descent or the number of bars should equal one another. What it did that, it went almost to the penny. Now it's bouncing off that low. But each one of these things has a time limit. So I would say the time limit for this particular pattern is about to be completed because if it starts to fail here, you've moved to the right and now you have to look at other patterns. Most importantly, the weekly chart has the pattern that I call the dreaded H, it's technical Friday today. So we do some of this. What is the dreaded H? It's a pattern that comes down sharply, straight line, and then bounces and at a peak A or a B, it fails and it takes out that left side low. If it closes two out of three bars below that, you can have a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. We saw that in the pattern we were looking at just a moment ago, and I can't remember what it is. But in the meantime, here we have this arch formation failing at an A, dreaded H. It closed last week well underneath the low that was made on the left side, which is, I think, 143 35 and here it is at 146 30 so if it closes this week above that left side low and above the low that was made back in july um that's going to be important and i need to just double check my numbers here because I've got a feeling that it is this low right here that we're talking about no is it this low let me just check what we're talking about here that's correct. That was the week of the August the 18th, um, 143.35. So one, if, if we close above that, that will be a, a, a short-term positive for the semiconductors. And the question came in, uh, what would you be looking at for either a re-entry of the SOXS <clears throat> or when would you think of covering your short position, the core position of the SMHs? I'll talk about that when we return. Dow's at 47, this is at 21. I think pretty well when you think about everything. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So attention to Friday, let me just show you what I'm looking at. Look at NVIDIA, this is the semiconductor area. A nice strong leg A off the bottom, uh, just in terms of numbers, but not in terms of the candles themselves. One, two, three. It took one, two, three, four, five, six candles to get from the low of uh, 409, uh, round number low, 409 on the 21st of September to the high today of 441. So that's a 50-point move. Uh, 409, whoops, is that correct? No, what am I saying? 409 to 441. Yeah, so that's no, that's about a 30%. So it's not even yet quite a 10% move. And uh, also at the same time, look how quickly it dropped from 439 high of the 20th. Within, within two days, it goes to uh, that 409 level. So it's taken, look how long it's taken to, to move up. I like it the exact opposite way. When I see a low like the low we got in October, or anything, I like to see just, it's like the shorts get squeezed. There's not a second that they have relief. Just every little pullback of 10 points in the Dow and it moves up another 20. Every 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 move in the S&P of, of 15 points, next thing it's up 25. We're not seeing that. There's a lot of tent tentativity. Tentativity? Tentivity out there. So within and within that context, look at the V-shaped pattern in the weekly chart of NVIDIA. That nine is still way over the 14. MACD has dropped. Stochastic is very weak at 47%. On balance volumes holding well. I give credence to the nine over the 14 at this point. So I'm saying I would not rule out NVIDIA as a big player in the next big market move to the upside. But this digestive phase, this pyramid pattern says... There is a there's a really good chance that we might have to test that 410 to 400 area yet again uh, before we get a bigger move to the upside. If I'm wrong, then by next week, if next week the nine period moving average <clears throat> in the SMHs remains green, has not turned pink, I'm going to be impressed with that. Look at applied materials, AMAT. Hey Amen. This is one. Of, you know, these these are all great companies in the semiconductor. A peak E in the weekly chart. Look at this peak E that we just saw in the uh, uh, five minute chart. Look at the, it was a peak F. Look, peak F. Look at that arching over as you're making higher highs, but they just nominal new highs, and then you start to make seriously lower lows and lower highs. That just says you need a little more time for applied materials. Look at advanced micro devices. Also, a great company. Oh, oh, 10 minute chart. That was, we were not looking at 10 minute charts. We were looking at weekly, daily, weekly, and monthly charts. On the left is the daily, on the right is the weekly. And here we go AMD. AMD is going to this trend line resistance. But look at that high. Why did I not type that in? 164 was the high in November of 2021. Goes down to the 50s, bounces up to 132. 130, yeah, 
uh, and that was in uh, May. And now we're looking at a price point that has, I had this measured move to the left side from the right side, from the, on the right side from the left side over here. There it is. Look. Left side, right side. And it's it taking a little bit of time, but it's getting close to it. And it did hit the 94s. And here it is, 104, 10 points higher. It's 11, 10, 11% higher right at the 50-period exponential moving average resistance. So it's not looking very powerful at this particular point, but it's definitely not breaking down, but it is making consistently lower highs and lower lows, meaning the trend remains down for now. But look at that nice sweep in the stochastic, but it's only at 31%. On balance volume rally. MACD just turned positive. Nine is still under the 14. So I'm just saying to you, um, Marvell, another one that I always look at, very important. Oops, don't type it there, type it right here. Click MRVL. Yeah, it's the same thing, sitting on the 200p moving average. Did I ignore it? Sure, I ignored it all the way up there. But look what happened. When it touched it once, it means it's become a magnet point, and it's become a magnet point of 52.79. It's trading at 55.30 right now. Um, it's going to take a little while for this to improve. So I'm just saying I still think we've got time at least for another a little while. I don't know how, what the little while is, but I haven't seen a signal that says to me. And if you look at the SOXS, which is it made a peak E in the daily chart, and that is turning around right now with that move yesterday with their semiconductors higher and again today. But look at that nine still way over the 14. Okay, talking about that, let's just go to serious stuff that we haven't looked at. Gold, gold is down now. It's unchanged. It's actually down a point at 1877. Um, and that nine period moving average, sorry, the 200 period moving average, it's going to close the week for the first time under the 200 period moving average. It has not been there since the last time was the week of the 25th of November when it was in the 1825s in the continuous contract. Look at silver. Same thing. Silver is uh, had a big rally to the 200 period moving average this morning, 23.80. Now it's at 22.86. Can't hold the gain. Let's look at the dollar. The dollar is holding very nicely off its lows. It's 106.10. Remember, I'm looking at this and saying the 9 is still over the 14. It's still very strong. Look at the UUP. UUP as an alternate account, G slash C. Is it going to make the D? It often does, but my root is the dollar index. So let's see what happens there. But look, it's a leg D in the weekly chart. Slightly different weekly charts. Uh, and this is very interesting since they, are, they should mesh, but they don't. Look, this weekly chart in the dollar is very different to the UUP. We are along the UUP since 2018. It's had a fantastic move. It had a fantastic move up. We're taking a little bit off. And now it's pulled back. I might take a little bit off Monday or Tuesday again, and then we'll see what happens to the dollar. In the meantime, I wanted to see two out of three weeks of consecutive weeks of closes above 105.88. I, I should type that in. I don't like to because it gets smoothed out, and then I've got a number that it does isn't relevant anymore. But I'll put it in for now. 105.88. And so far, we're at 106.12, and we've got a couple of hours to go, five hours to go before the close today. So we're going to be watching this closely. And if it does close two out of three weeks above, it means that you've turned this whole level right here, 103 area, into really important support on any pullback after that. It's going to tell us a huge story, and it'll tell us about gold as well. Meantime, back at the ranch, uh, that was that. Um, uh, look at the EUR, USD, had a big spike early this morning. And then I typed it in the wrong place. Let me type it in over here. EURUSD. It's held some of that spike. It's made two days of higher lows and higher highs. It's trading at 1.058. Uh, gray leg A, a lot of work to do before it can turn positive. Uh, but it, it, it's a start. USDJPY, this is the yen currency pair. Made a peak D. If there's no new high today from yesterday's high, and it's got a leg D in the weekly chart very close to the previous high. You remember how many times we looked at daily, weekly, monthly charts that eventually get back to the previous high? In this case, we're 9.711. That was the high of 
Uh, that was the night of the 21st of October last year. Remember, we got the fabulous turnaround in bonds and market on the down and market on the way up. That's where we actually went long and still hold the long position in the diamonds and the new DOW. I'll be back in a moment. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So just a real quick thing, Palantir uh, Technology is a question about it. Uh, yeah, this had, look, this is a beautiful pattern, the, the H pattern that holds the left side low, 13.68 was the low in August, comes all the way up to the 16th, comes back down and tests exactly 13.68 in September. So now there's a pattern that I say the dreaded H, the lowercase H, didn't take out the left side low, can form a cup formation, just like those, the, the uh, what we were looking at before when I said, oh, the dollar. And now what I want to see is two out of three consecutive uh, days. So that's out of three days, two of those days, I want to see a close above this high to say, okay, now we can tackle the next big left side target. And that would be 16.35. The high today is 16.81. It's the 16.19 right now. So if it can close a couple of days in this area, it means now I can start looking, first of all, at the left side high of 16.92, uh, the ugly candle of the 9th of August and then go step by step to the upside. And it says you've turned the midpoint now into really important support that should hold. But there is a potential head and shoulders in the weekly. There's also peak F that says sell signal. I haven't yet got a sell mode designation. 
but the technicals, the nine is still over the well over the 14. The other technicals are weak. So just watch it. Now, let me just do this before we wrap up. I think I covered most of what I want you to do today. Oh, high-grade copper. High-grade copper had a very nice move to the upside, and now it's giving it back uh, from earlier on. And that's really what I'm talking about. I don't think we're quite ready for the big, massive move to the upside yet. I think we're starting to build it. I'm starting to see some stocks really acting pretty well. So uh, with that said, yeah, I got that, I got that, I got that real quickly. Okay, so now we're looking at for the day. If, by, if after 2 o'clock the Dow is up over 60 points and holding, it means that we could close positive. But I got a feeling that just there's a little nervousness going to come in towards the close if we don't get any signs of any appeasement to all these different activities that are really going to be negative for the market. So in the meantime, I think we're trying to build the base. We haven't quite got the yet. Nice bounces 